Hello, traders. My name is Akil Stokes, host of the Trading Coach Podcast, and welcome to another episode. If you guys are new, I am a trader, mainly in the Forex market, but I'm also a trading coach over at tier1trading.com. In today's episode, we're going to talk about something called the triangle of excellence and how gaining confidence in yourself will help you gain confidence in your trading, which will hopefully help you gain money in your trading account. So a handful of topics on board today. We're going to talk about analysis paralysis, about wasting time, how trading can be scary. I'm going to walk you through my biggest drawdown and also talk to you a little bit about your first live trade. All of that and more in today's episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. I hope you guys enjoy. Not buying it. Not buying it. So interesting look. I don't know what the point of that conversation was, but I'm pretty sure it had a point. Um, I get off on these rants and I forget what the actual reasoning was. It obviously, it's to make you a better trader. But the point is, don't scare yourself out of situations. And that's one of the things that, that there's the point. There we go. We talked about having a lot of knowledge before the break and having a lot of um, techniques and strategies and just knowledge of the markets to find different opportunities. That can be a double-edged sword just as well. Because now having all of that knowledge, you're going to get paralysis analysis where you see so much in the market and it could be this, it could be that, it could be this, it could be that, that you just freeze and you do nothing. And yeah, you don't lose anything because you don't get involved in those losing opportunities. But guess what you also do not do? You also don't win because you never actually execute a trade. And you sit there over analyzing the market, seeing everything and doing nothing. And maybe, again, you don't blow your account, but you never actually gain any ground in trading. And that, in my opinion, is worse. I'd rather blow my account and know that I stink and I shouldn't be doing this than just kind of exist. Because when you exist, you waste the most valuable thing we have in life which is time and all you're doing is watching time tick away tick away sorry to be harsh until you're ultimately deceased at least if you blow your account you can say you know what Trading isn't for me. Maybe you wasted a year of your life. Not wasted. I'm sure you gained some valuable experience. But maybe it took a year of your life. And now you, you, it allowed you to find a different passion that you love. But you got to do something. Good old analysis paralysis. That's always fun. It's so, it's so hard, though. Not being gun shy is so hard. It's so hard to take trades, man. I can't tell you how many traders I've worked with where it's like they, they, they perform excellent analysis, right? Identify, predict, decide. They just can't pull the trigger of the E. They just can't execute it. They see it. They know what they're supposed to do, and they just can't do it. It's normal. You see, you see it. You see it in sports all the time too, right? You give someone's got a wide open shot. I was watching the NCAA tournament this weekend, and um, who who was the player from uh, oh, the team that lost? I forgot, forgot what team it was, but he had. I'm screaming at the TV. I'm like, shoot it, shoot it, and he I mean, he passes it wide open three. It was like a, a minute left. I told my wife, I'm like, he does he doesn't want that. He doesn't want that. He's not a gamer. He does not want that shit. He does not want that pressure of missing that shot. So it's it's in sports, it's in life, it's it's in you know. You see that girl across the bar that uh, you know, she's smiling at you, giving you a little winky face, and you know you should go over and talk to her, but you don't. Or you go over and talk to her, but you never actually ask her out or ask for the numbers, the digits, because you're scared, and she's just waiting. She's she's got in her mind as as soon as as soon as he says, hey, can I? Yes, yes, yes. You here's my number. It's already written down. But because you never ask, you never get it. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne, the great one. So, 
Um, Matthias says, what, was it because it didn't have the right system to go for your personality? Was this going back to the, the failure to pull the trigger? Uh, no, I think it's just fear. I mean, it does, it, confidence is one thing. So there, there could be all types of things we can pick out where maybe they didn't go through the right process of building their belief cycle. Maybe they didn't go through the back testing. Um, but there comes a point in time where when you first start trading, you're, you, you, you're going to be scared. I think we can all admit that. I can admit that. Your, your first live trade is going to be, you know, unless you're trading very, very, very small, like I recommend, and that's, that's the reason I recommend it. But let's say your, your first live trade is probably going to be one of the most fearful things you ever do, especially when you click that button and it, and it goes against you right away. And until you can build that belief cycle, it's going to be extremely hard. Who, does anybody not know what the belief cycle is? The triangle of excellence. Belief, actions, results, right? They all help each other out. You can think of belief as essentially confidence in yourself to do what you're supposed to do. So confidence, right? The more confidence you have, the more likely you are to take the right action. And if you've done your job correctly, the more that you take the right action, it's with an S, actions, <laughs> the more likely you are to see the results that you should get. And then, as you start seeing the right results, what do you think that does to your belief or your confidence? Do you think you get more or less confident? Do you think you believe in yourself a little bit more? Yeah. You believe in yourself a little bit more. And as you believe in yourself a little bit more, you take even more of the right actions. And as you take even more of the right actions, you get more of the right results. And it just keeps feeding. It snowballs. It feeds each other. Until you end up like myself or Jason Greystone where you just seem robotic. You guys see, like, you got, many of you guys comment. And you're like, man, we see you guys take trades, winner, losers, and you just don't care. I don't. Because my belief and my confidence in myself and my ability is so strong that no trade actually matters. I just do it because that's what I'm supposed to do. You've seen me take plenty of trades where I'm like, man, this trade stinks. I don't want to be involved, but meets the rules. Got to take it. So you got to get that ball rolling. It's hard. That's the hard part in the beginning to get it rolling. Because if you don't get it rolling, it won't build. Once it builds, it's easy. You just got to, you know. But... It's hard to get it rolling. Same thing with a drawdown, right? Drawdowns are horrific. And drawdowns, they, they always will be horrific. But once you get through your, your first massive drawdown, there's really no fear of any other drawdown, right? Because you've done it before. Basically, a drawdown, you, you've fought off death, what feels like death at the time, and, and you've overcome. And once you've done it for the first time, you have confidence that you can do it again. You know, I always look at look back at my worst drawdown. I'm like, man, I, I got through that. I'm invincible. I think my worst one, it was me and me and a buddy of mine in the live room. We, we had a competition of who can lose the most. He won. He was at 17. I took I think I took like 13 straight losers. I couldn't I couldn't buy a win, man. I couldn't buy a win. We come in each day. I'm at 13. What are you at? 17. Ah, okay. I'm gonna find four losers today. Because at that point it hurt so much that all you can do is joke about it. <laughs> when the pain is that bad, like all you can do is joke about it. And funny thing was, we, we came back and ended with a positive month. And after going through that, I'm like, man, I can, I can lose 17 times in a row and not blow my account and still have a positive month? This is crazy. Nothing will bother me again unless I lose more than 13 times, whatever it was. Or go past my, my, my worst max drawdown. Last year was my worst max drawdown. To start the year. For you guys that were with me last year, man. It, ugh, that was horrible. What did I, what, what, what did I lose? I lost like 17% of my account in the first six weeks. 20% of my account in the first six weeks of trading. It's awful. Horrible. Yeah. It was the first time I ever actually like, checked my spreadsheet and I had to remind myself what my max drawdown was. I'm like, this is, I, I might be in danger of getting to my max drawdown. 
I lost 20%. I think it was like 17. Let's call it 20. 20% in the first six weeks. I think mid-February is when I started uh, evening out the curve. And by evening out, like literally not making money, but just like treading water a little bit. I stopped sinking and started going sideways in February. And then I won for 10 months straight. You guys know the story after that or nine months straight and everything was awesome. Everything was awesome. Yeah, it was bad. But I won. And once you win, you become a little bit more numb to the pain. It's not uh you don't you don't fear it. I had a I had a big bike accident last year. Flew off my bike down a hill going like 40 miles per hour and rolled and laying there lifeless in the middle of the street waiting to get hit by a car. Somehow rolled to the side of the street and had my whole half of my body like skinned. Scary stuff. I feel more confident now because I survived that. I know the power of a bike helmet. Saved my life. You learn, you gain confidence from your drawdowns, from your roughest moments in life, from your, your, your failed relationships, your mistakes, anything. You learn from it, and it's not as scary the next time through. That's what life is about, guys. Trading's the same way. It's just a small part of it. As always, thank you for taking some time to listen to today's episode. Believe it or not, but I do read each and every comment that you guys leave about the show, and I just, I, I love the enthusiasm. In today's episode, we talked about the belief cycle. Well, there's another cycle that I believe in as well, and that is the cycle of success. And that means once you become successful, it's only right that you reach a hand down and help someone else as well. And if we can continue to do that, all we're going to do is get bigger, stronger, and more successful as a community.